everyone welcome back to RTS and welcome back to a fun video today in which we are going to talk about base pages for scrapbook layouts and I'm going to show you quickly what that is that is something as simple as this but it's very very pretty it's just base pages and so I'm going to talk about it uh, what base what base pages are I'm going to show you a flip through of what my base pages are that I have currently done and then we're going to build some together so it may be a long video doesn't matter fast forward if you don't want to hear everything absolutely so base pages are simply that they are the foundation the base of a layout a basic design and then you just do these in assembly line process or several at a time and then you have them ready to go when you sit down to do a page and so what this does at that it lets you be creative but yet there are just times you don't have the energy for the title the photos the journaling the embellishments the clusters the design where you put in what you just want to play with paper this is one of those activities no different than organizing or making embellishments things like that so that is just an activity to be creative but then when you go to use them you're like wow that was quick yes so i have done this for years and so i want to show you that's what this album is is that if i was to open this up and i'm just going to show you a couple because the page protectors offer so much glare i'm going to come back with them taking out of the album okay so if i was to open this up this is what you would see you would see base page after base page already done so i would just simply add photos and journaling later so there's a base page and, and see they're all in page protectors and if i flip back there's another base page so that's what this album is i just wanted to give you a reference from the beginning of what what this is it's just an album of base pages and there's something in the front of this album which i'll talk about coming up in the video as well so that's what this is base pages and so when i come back i'm going to show you different ways of how i've done base pages different ways to approach doing base pages and what you can use for base pages okay so hold on i will come back and uh, i'll just take this album to the side and we'll just show the layouts okay hold on Okay, so what I did was I opened up that album and I took some of these base pages that I have completed and I took them out of the album because the page protectors just have so much glare and nobody can enjoy their cake, right? So I just took them out. I thought it would make the video presentation a little bit better. So when you're doing something like this and just absolutely giving yourself permission to have fun, uh, and this is just a sampling of how many I have in that album. And then whenever I use one, I just leave an empty space. And then when I make some, I just fill up the empty spaces. It's easy peasy. At one time, I had these in bags, you know, those plastic bags that we hold kits. Uh, one time I had them in pizza boxes. And then when I put them in an album, it just made the process better for me because then I can just flip through. I don't have to take out a stack and just handle them all if that makes sense so i love having them in that album and again uh, someone don't let me forget i'm going to show you something else to include in this base page type of catalog if you want so when it comes to building base pages the quickest way to start this if you're interested in something like this is to start with your go-to design something that is your favorite for me it is my happy horizontal which is basically a big strip of paper at the top a big strip of paper at the bottom sometimes six by twelve eight by twelve uh, four by twelve whatever and then uh something to cover up the seam this has a decorative edge so that is a great way so just get out those pretty papers those scraps that you still enjoy and make some base pages now with that being said uh, some people will say start a project like this and use the papers you don't like sometimes I don't really agree with that unless you're cutting things and you're not sure of the measurements but if you start with papers you don't like then you're not going to chances are you're not going to like the finished product so I say use what you love it's just paper <laughs> yes okay so I just want that want to say that uh, use papers you love then you will be in love to use what you just created so that is a simple way to approach this go to a design that you really enjoy or a sketch that you really uh, that you go to over and over again so here is a simple go to go to i'm sorry i'm working on a go to design right now video so it's in my brain this is a, another quick base page where it's a mat on top of a mat with a big band in the middle very very simple but look how pretty that is and that is a quick base page so i would pull that out of that album out of that page protector put on my title put on my photos and i have enough room on here 
that I'm not limited to just one photo, two photos, three photos. It's what I want. And then, of course, my journaling and embellishments. Now, when I do base pages, you'll see that most of mine are one page layouts because in my process if I want to do a quick page it's going to be a one page that's just my process but in the segment where we do some base pages how about we do a two page just so you could see but it would be the same thing you just put them side by side in your album or your catalog or your box okay so then when you like a design repeat it so you can see in this one these are both uh I'm not even going to go over papers because I'll get stuck there. <laughs> I just talk about paper. We all love paper. This is the same thing. So this is a base page with the same design. It's just different papers and it looks different. And so one day I just sat down and I liked this design and I whipped up 10 or 12 of these. Okay. And I think I'm down to three. Uh, yes, this is the last one. I have three of these left. So it's the same thing. It's just a mat on top of a mat with a band of paper. Very, very quick. So that's all the same design. So that's another approach. Do a lot of them, do them in assembly line, do the same design. Okay. So then the next way you can approach this is, is that if you have a collection or you have some papers left over from a manufacturer, you still like them, but you want to use them up, make some base pages. And so I had this Bella Boulevard collection not sure of the name and i liked it but yet i hadn't been playing with it and i wanted to kind of just play with some bright happy colors so you can see here are two base pages that are exactly the same design they're the same design with the same collection same manufacturer but i won't have to use them necessarily uh, in the same album when i go to use them so i just did the same thing <laughs> just switched up the papers so that's another approach okay and then the other approach is to you can use scraps but again use scraps that you still love don't just go to the bottom of the barrel and you don't like them if you don't like paper get rid of it that is the best advice i can give you we have too much paper no sense wasting your time on the paper you don't like give it to someone else and so this is just scraps and some of these are overlapped some are butted uh, beside each other with just a paper strip here to the left now this is a very quick design and it's fun because then you get to play with a lot of different patterns and then the beauty is is that you could rotate this in four different ways so you can do that design in four different ways makes for fast um, it makes for a fast base page and then when you go to use this I mean there's so many options just beautiful and of course this is just uh, bands of paper uh, with some washi and then also you will notice that if I do the bend test everything is not adhered completely because I may want to do some tucking things like that and then also if you just have scraps don't forget you can pull out some paper you don't like or colored cardstock that you're not using and use that to build your base page if that makes sense this is a block design just using scraps of, scraps of paper and we have this talked about in our go-to designs another block design I even have a mat for where I want to place my four by six photo I don't always put mats on every one of my base pages once in a while I I get a bee in my bonnet and I do so then this is another quick um, base page just using I believe these are my, uh, my mind's eye papers and so it's just a block with a band very very pretty so the versatility of something you like using a base page uh, my suggestion would be and I've done this for several years is that you want to stick with designs that are adaptable to your style so for me when I look at something like this I can absolutely just put one four by six photo right Right here title journaling bing bang boom i'm done or i can see four wallets i can see six wallets i can see two horizontal photos stacked so it has to be uh it has to be what is your style don't start doing designs that don't fit your style because then you probably won't pull for them but with the other uh, notion that would be also maybe break out a design you've never played with and then use that as something fun everything doesn't always have to be the same now this is one of the uh, base pages we are going to do together it's so quick <laughs> honestly and it's using six by six paper pads because one day I was in the mood to play with six by six paper pads I didn't feel like finding the photos I didn't want to have the brain power for title and journaling so I just made base pages I think I think I did 24 that day it was just fun and so it's basically using three pieces of double-sided paper and you just put them in this design it's just you know just blocking them on the paper just stacking them now this one I did put a mat for a photo I even put them on embossed cardstock. Very, very fun. And here's another one. That's the same design. 
Oh, and there's another one. There's the same design. <laughs> yeah, see? It's the same design. It's six, using six by six paper pads, but just using that design. And so I could always uh, title journaling embellishments, but I don't worry about any of that when I'm creating a base page because I'm flexible when it comes to working with a page. I don't mind switching things up, okay? And I don't mind cutting photos down either. So if you're someone who only uses four by six photos when you're doing base pages, keep that in mind okay all right so another way to approach base pages is say you're playing with a kit and you're done playing with the kit you're kind of tired of it you have some leftovers uh, build some base pages for future pages um, because you might not have the photos to go with it you don't have the energy to look for photos and but you want to keep playing with the papers uh, do a base page and that's what I did on this in this case I actually remember the layout I was making and I just had these for leftovers and so I just stacked these sizes as they were on top of each other made a base page put it on some cardstock and you can see with the bend test there are the corners are not adhered down in case I want to do some tucking. Another approach would be to take those small squares and do the cattywampus <laughs> method, as we call it. And you can see all of these squares are basically two by two, and they are just simply layered on top of each other in a cattywampus whimsical manner. Nothing's meeting up, just fun and quick. And then I just added a uh, washi strip right here. And this is a fun design again because it's the half of a happy horizontal which means you can rotate that yes very very fun always very fun <laughs> yes like doing that and then this is a great way if you have those small bits and bobs uh bits and bobs of paper and then also if you have smaller pieces you can always just trim them into a two by two or a three by three okay or use varying sizes they don't have to be the same size so then this is another one of those where you're just using leftover scraps you're doing a lot of layering and this is using a lot of different patterns a lot of different sizes and there's no rhyme or reason other than they are kept in that band format very 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 pretty and again you can do this in four different orientations Again, limitless is what you can do for base pages. And then again, here's another one using block and the band. Now, we did talk about different approaches and uh, different things you can use as far as scraps and collections and things like that. But let's take a minute and let's talk about why you would want to do a base page. What, what, you know, why? And so some people would be saying, okay, you already have all of this done. Why wouldn't you just go ahead and put on photos in a title and a journaling? And it's just because of, uh, as I said earlier, it's just one of these activities that you want to play with paper. Your brain is just not there for the writing part and the thinking part. You know, it takes two different types of brain, uh, side of the brain for that. And so this just makes the process quicker. And it's just one of those things that you can do that when you are in that creative zone or you're at a crop or you want to crank, uh, you know, crank out 30 layouts in a weekend, uh, you can rely on something like base pages. And there's another part of this process that we'll talk later down the road in a few months. There's another part of this. Uh, you can take this in another direction as well. Well, we'll talk about that. So this again is another way to approach a base page, taking some blocks on top of a mat and again, band with some blocks. I probably didn't have to go through all of these, but just to give you an idea of some of the base pages I have at my disposal. This is a fun one, just strips and blocks of paper, call it good. <laughs> and this is just all part of a collection that I was playing with. Again, this is We Are Memory Keepers. Again, blocks of paper on even, you'll see that a lot of those were on white or neutral cardstocks, but you can also use pattern paper. And again, here's a grid just small squares this of course is good with six by six paper pads because the patterns are scaled down you just cut blocks of paper in the same size and then just put them on there and again this is one of those designs when you put your papers down then the next one you can do the same thing but just rotate it and then the next one rotate the papers again and the next one rotate again and so you're doing that same design in four different uh rotations that's fun again just leftover october afternoon you know we stretch that october afternoon paper as far as we can and so that is just strips of paper and again a simple block design with a couple strips and then this is my favorite this is my go-to and when i just simply want to play and don't think this is what i do and it's basically 
6x12, 6x12 with a strip of something in the middle covering up the seam. And on this Happy Horizontal, I absolutely did put two photo mats because I had those papers laying there. I thought, why not? And I do have a decorative edge at the top. This is very simple to do, and I could do hundreds of these and never get tired of this because there's four patterns on one piece of paper. Then, of course, if you're doing a two-page and you're a two-page gal, just do the same thing twice, okay? But when you're using scraps, sometimes it's hard to uh, stretch that paper into two separate, uh, you know, for a two-page layout. But we will do that. We will accomplish that when we sit down and do one together. And, of course, this is a fun one. Again, this is the happy horizontal, but you see that it's shifted. I only have about... Uh, a I'd say three and a half right here, and this is about a nine piece of paper. And then I used some washi tape by Jelly Bean Soup to cover that seam. Even did some corner rounding, and we talked about that in our go-to designs of Happy Horizontal. So there's again, there's one way, there's two ways, there's three ways, there's four ways. Yes, love it. Okay, and again, just some more block with bands. Now this is a fun one. We will do this. It's so simple. And here's the thing is that it's just a mat of pattern paper on top of a piece of solid cardstock, or you could use another pattern. And then you take a strip of cut aparts and you don't cut them apart. You leave them as is and you run it right down the middle. Again, you can do it this way, this way, this way, and this way. Now that's a quick two page. Yes, this is fun. We'll do that. And then of course this one, a lot of people do this when you have leftovers, but then this is something with those leftovers where you do base pages and you do more than one of them. And then when you sit down to use this, all of that work of cutting those strips and adhering those strips and getting them in this diagonal sense, the work's all done, okay? And so this is leftovers from Pink Paisley Memorandum, and I just have them glued on there. Very fun. Now, I have done base pages where I have taken my leftover thin strips or those branding strips, and I have done where the base was all one color. It was all pink or it was all blue. And then I've done it in such a way where I've had green up here, and then the other half was blue. And then in this case, I followed a color scheme. So there are so many ways to do base pages using these thin strips. And then, of course, there's another block with a band. Even did some cutting of those hexagon shapes block with a band. Very, very simple. Again, on embossed cardstock. And again, nothing's adhered down in case I want to tuck something. And then this is the same thing, block with a band. This is a great way to use scraps in the size they're in. And then this is one, it's very fun. This is just basically a 10 by 10 mat with strips of paper cut in notches. And we will be talking about this banner shape in our next go-to design. That's what I'm working on right now today. Is that right there? And then of course, that's that same square cattywampus. You see, I just have them overlapped. Nothing's lined up, nothing's perfect, but it's on a beautiful piece of embossed cardstock. And I'm trying to think which way it's supposed to go. I guess it really doesn't matter because again, that's one of those designs that you can do it in four different rotations, okay? So when you're doing something like that, just pay attention as to where, how the design image is on your papers. And again, this is another one of those Bella Boulevard papers that I was playing with that collection. Cut those strips up, butted some to each other, overlapped some, gave it a washy strip right there. Easy peasy. And then here's some Maggie Holmes that I had left over. And I this is just blocks with a band on top of a yellow dot pattern paper. How fun is that? It's beautiful. And all it is is paper, but when I go to use it, it's already done. And so then also, the other thing is that when you do a base page, and I guess we didn't answer that question. But when you do a base page like this, the color scheme's already done for you. So you can do it in two different ways. When you find photos, you can find something in that color scheme or that same mood and feel, or you can convert your photos to black and white. There's no wrong way to do that. And then we didn't ask the question. We did, we did not answer the question as to why you would do this. Why wouldn't you just go ahead and finish the page? And it's simply because you just aren't in the frame of mind to do it. You just want to play with paper. And then when you want to do some fast pages, this design and the foundation is already done you just get right into the playing part so that was to answer that question as to why okay so now the, let's talk about something else that I have in my uh, base page album and I simply just I think it's a project a life album that's what that was got it at Walmart years ago when Walmart carried project life <laughs> That was several years ago. It was $9.99 for those albums. How fun is that? Uh, what I wanted to say is 
there's something else I include in that album. So if you want to hang one, I'll talk about that because there's something else. Even if you don't want to do base pages, you might like the next idea. So let's talk about that. I'll move these for a minute. I mean, that's, that's a nice stack. <laughs> yes. Okay. So in this base page album, another thing I have in the front, and this is something I've had for years because I've been a long time scrapbooker. Uh, in a couple weeks, I will be starting my 24th year as a scrapbooker. <sighs> Hard to believe. <laughs> yes. Is that I used to get layout kits, meaning it's just basically paper, a sketch, and a photo, maybe a little bit of embellishment, and then you would play with that. So something very, uh, I'm going to talk about this quickly, that you can do along with these base pages is to take those layout kits out of the pizza box, out of the packaging, and put them in page protectors so that they are ready to go because they really are base pages because you're going to be adding the photos and the title and the journaling later. So you can do it with two different approaches. You can just simply take it out of the packaging, put in a page protector with the instructions, your photograph, and then that layout kit is ready to go. Or what you can do then is take these layout kits and when you want some activity where you're playing and you're scrapbooking but you don't want to deal with the photos and all that other stuff, start assembling these layout kits and put them in such as this base page album. So say with the scrapbook generation sketch, I think there's only, what, three or four pieces of paper. I could absolutely put these layouts together as Scrapbook Generations has instructed me, and then I would put these finished, assembled pages back in here, and then I add the photos and journaling later, just as the same with this base page. Okay, if I can find another one. It's the same thing. So when you have all those layout kits, uh, and I used to have them stacked up like firewood. <laughs> So I stopped buying them and then I started using them. And I think I'm truly only down to about six or seven layout kits and I have used every one because I've either used it or I tore it down and I put the paper among my other papers. And so when you start either assembling these layout kits or putting them in something as an album, as a catalog, you're going to use them more because you can flip through them in a better manner than when they're in a box hidden under in a closet. You know what I'm talking about. So there are, that is what I mean. I just have these layout kits just in by themselves in a page protector. There's nothing on the back. This is just the kit itself with the instructions, my photo, and then they, they're not assembled because when I use something like this from a layout kit, I don't always follow what the company I don't always follow the sketch to a T. So I would much rather build this when I'm getting ready to do the page, if that makes sense. But the assembly uh, is can be done later is what I'm saying. So I just have the kits in page protectors along with the rest of my base pages. I hope that made sense. So that's how many I'm down to. All those years of scrapbooking, that's how many layout kits I have left. <laughs> that's fun to see because I've used them or I've tore them down. So when you pull out those layout kits, remember, you can. the first step is take them out of the packaging, take them out of the pizza box, put them in a page protector, and put all of them in an album, and that will be a quick catalog for you. Or then the next thing is take that, all those layout kits to a crop, assemble them, and put them back in an album so you can see them for future reference. That is how you can uh, increase your process time, finding different ways to have these base pages done or increase... What do I want to say? These are the little things you do as you scrap over the years that you will see that helps you in your process time so you get to create more layouts and more stories. Absolutely. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to come back and I'm going to sit here and I'm going to pull a couple of these and maybe we'll do three or four and we will build some base pages and then I'll show you a couple of resources where to go to find the designs for some base pages. Okay, so hold on. All right, so now let the fun begin because we are going to start creating some base pages because you can get that box and that bag and that album filled up. And I guarantee you it will increase your process time when you want to create more layouts in a shorter amount of time. Record the story more often. Okay, so there are lots of places to go when you need ideas for creating base pages. And I want to share them with you. And if you look at the show notes below, just hit the show more button and I will have every one of these resources listed. Just click on it, go over, have some fun. Yes, get that printer and ink ready. <laughs> okay, so the first resource would be Laura Whitaker uh, free sketchbook. And I've talked about this a lot. And so you can get a lot of 
ideas for creating base pages. Look at the very base of what Laura has done for her layouts. Very, very fun. Yes, triangle design. Okay, so that's one resource. The next resource is Scrapbook Generations. They have a slew of free sketches and you can go through and look at the ones that would perhaps give you a very basic page design to create a base page. And so right there's one of them. There's another. There's another. <laughs> yes, that resource will be listed below and free, free. And then the other resource, of course, is my lovely page maps. And we're absolutely going to use one of these for a two page base page because I want to show that. OK, so page maps that will be listed below. These come out free the first of every month. I never forget that. No, I forget to unload a dishwasher, but I certainly don't forget when page maps has a free sketch come up. Love what Becky offers for us. And then this is something I recently uh, showed in a spending freeze freebie. And this is a lovely free resource by Nori. Smith. I will have that information listed below. And she has a method called one, two, three, where you take uh, one piece of double sided paper, you have two pieces of cardstock and you make three cuts. This is very, very fun. And I'll have the video listed below that talks more about this. And then also to Noreen's information because I have permission to show this. So I was very happy that she allowed that. And then this is all free. So definitely look into Noreen's one, two, three uh, sketch and layout method. Very, very fun. And then the last thing is that you simply can go to what you've already done. Maybe you have done a page, look through your albums and look at the very base of your album. Look at the very basic design. And if you like that, take a photo of it or replicate it and then make notes and then keep that in your base page box or your album or your bag. And then you can keep replicating this as time goes by. That's what I will do. If I see something I like, I will make notes of it and just play with it until I get tired of it. Okay, so use your own pages for a base page um, resource, you know, as a design. Okay, so let's get playing. I may have to stop. I got to check on my little one, but we're just going to play. Now, when it comes to these, uh, creating these base pages, I've already done the cutting because I'd much rather show you what this is rather than spending the time to cut and to adhere. So I cut out the middleman, and so it's like a cooking show. I show you the finished result. <laughs> yes. So uh, when I was doing that flip through of some base pages I've already done, one of the ones that I really enjoy that is very simple is this one here. It is just a mat with a mat with some cut apart not cut apart. It's just in one strip. And so that is what I did in this sample. And again, this is just creating simple base pages. And I'm talking, what was this? Couple cuts. <laughs> yes. So this is Bella Boulevard. I used a three before cut apart strip as it is. I didn't cut it apart. And then I just matted it on this mat of, this is an 11 by 11 mat on a piece of turquoise cardstock. Now you talk about simple. Yes, you don't even have to have, write that down. You can remember. Just take some cut aparts. And now on this sample, these cut aparts do not have a mat because it it doesn't compete with the background. Now in this Bella Boulevard, you know, they use a lot of high energy color. So if I did not have this mat, it would kind of get lost a little bit. So you can always opt to do mats if your papers are competing. That's why I wanted to show you that. And then with that, remember, there's so many options. We talk about this in our go-to designs. I can take washi and run across that. And then also always break out your corner rounder and you can always break out an edge punch for just a little bit of everything. <laughs> Absolutely. So that is a very simple base page design. Oh, now, a lot of you gals say you have a hard time using those images. Right there, that is a good way to do it because some of your landscape of this image is already used up because of this strip of paper here. So then you can add some photos. And then if you think your photos are competing with your paper, then match your photos. So that is a definitely a very fun. <laughs> I love that. I really do. Because, of course, it says captured. Hello, happiness. Live. Laugh and let it be. <laughs> I think I need to say that every day. Okay, so that is a base page. And you can see I've already cut it down and I'm not going to adhere it because that's exactly what you would see. Okay, so that's a sample. Okay, so let's go to the next one. The next one is a very fun one. I had showed this one. Okay, now when you adhere those down, remember you're not going to adhere everything completely uh, strong and secure because in case you want to tuck things. So this is basically just 
bands of paper. Now with your bands of paper, just use scraps, leftovers, that type of thing. And you're working with a 12 by 12 format. So if you take 12 divided by four, you know your strips would be three inches. If you divide it by three, then your strips would be four inches. So just use that number 12 and divide it by ever how many strips you want and then play with your paper sizes. So for that one, what I did in that case is that I just have three pieces of cartabella paper, okay? And so this absolutely is just a six by 12, six by 12, but in reality, you know what this is? This is the same piece of paper I just cut in half. So that is how I got my strips because you know me, uh, these were just in my scrap pile because I love my happy horizontal. And then I would take this yellow band and put right on top of that. Okay, now with that, again, you can take washi. And whenever I have bands of paper, I'm always using washi to cover up those seams. I really like that washi with that paper. It looks very um, Mediterranean, yes. I could probably do a Disney Tiki page with that. <laughs> That'd be fun. And then also, too, don't forget, you can play with these strips. You can move these down, have one more color show than the other, move it up, okay? And then also, too, don't forget, you can rotate that. So you can go horizontal or vertical when it comes to those bands. And then another thing is, too, since you're covering your background page, you got to start with something, you know? I just use a piece of paper, the back of a piece of paper I don't care for. I'm never probably going to use that green. I don't care for that pea green. So I'm just using the back of that and then just using that. And I would cover that all up. So that is that uh, base page right there. Very fun and very quick. Can't say that enough. I think I say very fun about every two minutes. But to me, that is this hobby. It is very fun. <laughs> Absolutely. Okay, so now this is a really, really quick one. Because you're taking one piece of paper, cutting it, and then slapping it down. This is a slap and stick <laughs> base page. Okay, so you see we have basically a three uh, inch piece and then a nine inch piece. Okay, so that would be your one piece. And so I took this uh, Making Memories no, that's old school. My mind's eye piece of paper. It's all the same piece of paper. And I cut it in nine by three. And so then this would be, that would be my page right there. Okay. And then sometimes I will overlap one or the other. Depends on what I want. Now, when it comes to something like this, since you're using the same piece of paper, sometimes you have to tell yourself, well, which way is this going to be? Because my base page here, remember that's horizontal, but when I do it this way, it has to be vertical because of the way I wanted my stripes to be. I didn't want my stripes to be this way. And so when I cut my paper, because my flowers are going one way, my stripes are going another way. So when you're using that one piece of double-sided paper, you kind of have to pre-plan before you do that first cut. So this one will be this way but turned this way. So again, you can take these base pages. When you find any design you like, think about rotating it. So that's four options. Isn't that fun? And so, of course, then I just have a My Mind's Eye wood grain piece of paper, which is lovely. And then, of course, I could take washi. I think I really like this. No, this is what I wanted to show. You see how I use this Jelly Bean uh, washi tape right here? I wanted to say that, that if you're using a supply, don't be afraid to keep, I'll just kind of just rip that. Don't be afraid to keep using that same product, okay? You can use this, I mean, look how much you get on that. Thank you, Jelly Bean. Someone that knows how much to give someone, that's just really great. Uh, you can keep using a product and using a product until you get tired of it, because chances are you're not going to have the same pages back to back in an album okay so just have fun with that okay so that's that one very quick again you see i broke out my corner rounder always have that nearby i think that's one of those tools that should land on your work surface and stay there okay so the next one oh very very i was gonna say very very fun <laughs> no okay this is a really nice page to do okay and i think i have two samples for this one I think I did because I want to show something. Okay, so this is the base page I had showed in the flip through. Okay, and that's the same one. So this is one of those ones I get into doing and I keep doing because I like it. I will always keep doing this design. I love it. And so it's basically a 11 by 11 piece of paper on top of a 12 by 12 mat with a five inch band. That is how simple it is. So that is my page. I have this right here. Okay, so that is my page. I have my wood grain look at that oh, 
Yes. Now with wood grain, remember you can always have it go horizontal or vertical. It all depends. Sometimes I look at the very image of my wood grain and what do I want to see more? So that would be good. So then just 11 by 11 uh, mat, or I'm sorry, 11 by 11 block. I just cut it down and then there's a five inch band of paper. And that is that right there. And of course, when you adhere, don't adhere the very edges because you may want to do some tucking. And then with that, I wanted to show something. Okay, that's that same one. I love doing this. This is very quick. Is that how do I get papers for these base pages? Do I go and just pick out colors or what do I do? In my space, I have a section where I have paper page kits put together. Meaning it's just page kits, but it's just paper. And I have it separated by copy paper. And I've talked about that in some of my other videos. And if someone wants me to grab a chunk of that, because it's a, it's a, it's a nice category, I will do a flip through of that. And so basically what I do is when I'm in this mood where I want to put together uh, page kits and I don't want to do any cutting or anything like that, is that what I will sit down and I will grab three pieces of paper that coordinate wherever I find them from and I put them together and three seems to be my number. Why? Because if you cut those in half at six by 12 or whatever, as I'm showing in some of these base pages, that's really six pieces of paper. Okay. If you're doing double sided and a lot of my papers are double sided. Okay. So with that, I will create page kits that just have three pieces of paper and I do that. Sometimes I'll spend a couple days doing that because I just need to get my mind elsewhere or I want to play with paper. It's just something I do. So that is how when I build base pages, I just grab a chunk. And that's what I did for these pages right here. I just grabbed a chunk of these page kits and I started playing with them. So then when you're doing something like this and you have leftovers, okay, which would be like right here, then you can make base pages from your leftovers. So it's, it's the gift that keeps on giving. So for, to make this process even quicker, what I do is I use page kits that I already put together, which is basically simply three pieces of paper. That's all it is. And if someone wants to see a flip through, let me know in the comment section. I will grab a serious chunk of those paper page kits and show you some combinations I've done. Okay. And I'll um, also discuss where do I get color combinations from. That would be fun too. So there's that one. Okay. So now let's go into the next one. One of my favorite ones because it's the happy horizontal. <laughs> yes. This is basically... This will always be my go-to. Again, it's basically, you could use one piece of paper, cut it in half, and then you put in a, uh, you know, washi tape or a paper strip or a border sticker in the, to cover up the seam. It's very fun. So what I did for this one is that I took a piece of Echo Park paper, okay? And this is the Echo Park paper. I think that was from a... I was trying to think what that was from. It was a, a year, a calendar year or something. I cut that in half simply. That's all it is. And so then I would leave a little bit of white at the top, a little bit of white at the bottom, and then I'm going to use a piece of fabric washi. Isn't that pretty? Now tell me how quick is that? Super, super quick. And then the fact that this is already going to be done when I go to use this page... <sighs> Someone signed me up. And then, of course, because I had these three pieces of paper in my page kit. I already have this pink here. And so then I just created two four by six photo mats. And that is that base design right there. It's so quick. This doesn't even need anything. You don't need to remember this. It's just six by 12. Uh, it's just a piece of 12 by 12 cut in half at six by 12. Cover up the seam, do a couple photo mats. And then the, the other thing you can do with that is of course, bring break out your edge punch, break out your corner rounder. Just have fun with it. That is how simple that is. Okay, so let's go to the next one. The next one is where we're going to play with a two page base design. Isn't this hobby so interesting? And I, I do seek out uh, other gals on YouTube that continuously are changing their process, increasing their process time, taking something away, organizing, because in this hobby, there is always something to learn. There's always something to do. And so I don't want to remain stagnant. I always want to be doing something different. And so that's why I have paper here, there, and everywhere. That's why I have kits that is small, medium, large. And that's why I have paper pads that are all in different categories and why I have washi in some by color, some by group. There's, there's no... You do not have to have everything done the same to enjoy it. No. Have a little bit of fun. Let your hair down. <laughs> Absolutely. Okay. So for this two-page base design, this is something you can repeat over and over and over. 
<laughs> it's not going to get old. And I will have the link below for page maps. The one I'm going to use is April 2019, and it's this double page right here. In the page maps sketches that Becky uh, releases, she always has just usually one double page. So always look for that. And so this is so simple. So again, here are the three papers that was in that page kit that I pulled. Those were my three papers. So I'm going to do a two-page layout from these three papers and have some left over. Okay, so what I'm going to do, and if you look at the sketch, now this is something that some people will struggle with, is that they can look at a sketch, and this is by page maps, they do not list the measurements. If you want measurements, go to Scrapbook Generations, okay? They have it all going on. But I've been scrapbooking a long time, and the more you scrap, you already know what a 12 by 12 size is. Everything in my life, even in my home, in my mind, is based on what a 12 by 12 pages because I use it so often okay no joke 12 inches I can tell you what 12 inches is and so you can see that I already can tell you this is nine this is three and this is a nine you can I just know that because if you work with that 12 by 12 size long enough it becomes second nature so for that just following this base page so when you're looking for ideas don't look where the title is. Don't look at the photo size. Don't look at the embellishment clusters or the visual triangle. Forget all of that. Go to the very bare bones of this sketch. And you see, uh, Becky has three pieces of paper. <laughs> yeah, easy peasy. And we can do that, friends. We can do that. So I took this crank paper, love paper. And this is a 12 by 12 piece of paper. One is nine. One is three. That's how simple that's going to be. <laughs> Yes, poet and didn't know it. Okay, so I, I hope you don't mind that I already did the cutting and I'm not going to show the gluing because we all know how to do that. Yes, so then I took the second piece of paper, which is a lovely Cartabella uh, mint green, and I just simply cut it again at nine and three. So there's my nine and there's my three. So in my kit, I mean, look how fast that is. Somebody sing. That is just fast. That's two cuts of paper. Okay. So then in my paper kit, I had this other, um, my mind's eye paper. And so I just cut two strips. They're a half inch. And so right there is my page. Okay. Now, since I had in my kit, I mean, is that not quick? I just want to go over this measurement one more time. This is one piece of paper, nine and three. This is one piece of paper, nine and three. And these are half inch pieces. And again, you could use washi, you could use border stickers, just uh, scraps of paper. And so in my paper page kit, I had three pieces. So I, that's where I got that dark pink. And then I will keep this with this if I want to, because I could make some photo mats or use it as embellishments. So that's when I do base pages, sometimes I will keep, keep that extra leftover in with my base page because you just never know. There's always that option, okay? Because if I wanted to go find some embellishments, maybe I would have trouble finding something in this dark pink. Might as well use this, break out a die. So that is very quick. Look how fun that is. Oh yes, love that. Okay, so that's the two page. Okay, that is so fun, of course you know. When you're dealing with page maps, everything that Becky shows is fun. I really, I really think Becky is underrated for how much she adds to this community. And she designs for photo play paper now, so definitely check out. I will have the link below if you want to go see what Becky designs as papers for photo play. She's awesome, awesome. Okay, so now let's play with some 6x6 six six paper. Okay, and I think that's the last one. Yes. Okay. We're going to play with six by six paper pads because this is a great thing to do for the abundance of six by six paper pads. You know, we have a lot. You might as well own it. We might as well enjoy it. Can I get an amen? <laughs> yes. Okay. So what we're going to do is we are going to play with this design right here, which I had showed in the earlier segment that this is all the same design. Each one of these, that's all the same three designs. So I'm going to use this one here and you can see how quick this is. Okay, so I'm going to be playing with this uh, Jen Hadfield every day, which I love that collection. I wish I had a blouse. <laughs> I wish I had a blouse in this floral pattern. It's that pretty. Okay, so uh, for this, I have a piece of cardstock. Now I have a white textured cardstock. That's my preferred. And someone recently asked me, actually a few people asked me, where do I get my white textured cardstock? And for years I bought basil, but it's kind of hard to find and it got more expensive. So I will have a link below where I get mine. I get it in, I think it's a 50 or 60 pack. I think it's 60. 
uh, 60 sheets in a pack at Joann's and you can get white ivory and I also believe black in those mega packs in the uh, you know in the mega pack it's 60 I think it's 50 or 60 but I only get them when they're on sale so I will definitely have the link below and so if I know I'm running low then I keep looking and looking and I'll wait for a sale and of course when I buy when it's on sale sometimes I'll buy four or five packs of that 60 sheet uh, bundle because you know you're going to use it so that's where I get mine it's from Joann's online wait till there's a sale and also if you can get free shipping because paper is heavy so in this design you can see it is simply three or four pieces of six by six paper okay and if your paper in your six by six pad is double-sided then you only probably need three but sometimes it doesn't happen that way so basically all you're going to do is take uh, some six by six paper pads and then you can see in my layout that I just simply layer these block upon block and then of course you know my flower is going to go on top now with these this is six by six this is six by six and then this is a three by three no I'm sorry three by six because I don't need both of those but I wanted both of those patterns okay but if it was double-sided then you would just cut that in half and you would only need three six by six papers so you could stretch that one piece of paper and then of course my photo would go on there so that is what that would look like it's the same thing so you can just keep going over and over with that same design using a six by six and a six by six paper pad and also scraps and you'll see that I took this notebook edge punch and I think when you're doing base pages and you pull out a punch or a die or something like that well not even a die it would be a punch do it where it's generic a notebook piece uh, a notebook look will go good with any page so don't do it too theme specific unless you know exactly what album it may go into if that makes sense so you can see that's just a notebook edge that's a notebook edge and that is just simply taking I'll show that again and you just play around with them okay there's no wrong way you can play around with it this way just in a diagonal sense right there is a three by six all right there tell me that's not quick yes and then you can move these down you can have some space some people like space some people don't some people like to overlap and then some people like to even make that design even smaller there is no wrong way to do that how fun definitely a fun base page using a six by six paper pad which we all have that and so then when I do something like this I will grab 10 paper uh, 10 paper pads something I just want to play with or six and then I just sit down and I do this and sometimes I will do more than one from the same paper pad just a fun way and this is something fun to do at crops or when you're traveling you don't need a lot of supplies but you still feel like you're scrapbooking okay so that is how you can make some base pages using basic designs where to go for some resources for that and just have a whole lot of fun and then what does it take a little bit of washi and edge punch a corner rounder man you could take that on the road <laughs> absolutely so I hope this was something you enjoyed again this was something I wanted to show way back when I first started my YouTube channel and again I was recently just talking to someone about this and I thought I need to get on the train and show this but because I have been doing series on here I haven't really um, been making any base pages and I haven't used any base pages but going forward I'm going to be doing a layout project and so if I do scrapbook it's gonna have to be fast pages so if I pull out a base page you'll know where it came from and I'll refer everyone back to this video so that's what I wanted to show today so that's all I have for today I hope you got some enjoyment I definitely hope you got some ideas if you have a favorite basic design keep repeating it use different papers and stack them up like firewood so when you do want to do some fast pages some of the work's already done for you it's just prep that's all it is absolutely so that's all I have for today come back to RTS because you never know what we're gonna do. Bye.